Hello and welcome back to Goldner Woodland Farm. I'm Keith. Um, um, almost exactly a year ago, uh, I did a video titled Solar Charging My Rivian R1T. Um, that was January 15th of 23. Uh, this is January 19th of 24. And this is going to be uh, a little different. In this case, I'm going to do a little video about charging my house from my Rivian R1T. I'm going to talk a little bit about the challenges that we face um, here in Western Pennsylvania uh, with solar uh, charging in the winter, uh, but also talk about some uh, equipment challenges uh, and, you know, efforts that I made to, uh, to have backup systems in place so that if there was a problem, uh, you know, I'd have a backup uh, to solve that problem. And uh, where I am right now is I've had two major problems. Uh, so my primary system has partially failed and my backup system has failed. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, learn to uh, adapt and overcome. And so what we've done is we figured out a way to use the Rivian uh, to keep us up and running while I'm waiting for uh, repairs or replacements for uh, my my primary equipment. So one of the first challenges that, that we have is snow. Uh, so I, my solar panels are covered with snow. Uh, also, uh, we've had uh, many days of very cloudy, snowy, uh, rainy, very poor uh, solar production. Um, if I look at my uh, uh, charge uh, controller here, what we can see is um, I am getting some solar production, um, but it's not very much. And if I, so this is voltage right now, but if I change this screen, um, what this is, this is amps. So where I'm going between zero and one tenth of one amp of production and, you know, not that much stuff running in the house. Uh, so my inverters are only, you know, at less than 10%. So this is the percent of usage. Um, but, you know, almost, you know, essentially nothing from the solar panels. And that's a combination of snow on the panels and just very, very little sun. One of the other challenges that we're faced with right now is one of my charge controller inverters has failed. Uh, so, so this machine here, you can see is all black. Uh, we actually have it uh, disabled from the rest of the system. Uh, so a little over, almost two weeks ago, uh, we had a major fault in that machine. Um, and because it's down, uh, and the way my system is set up, if you, if you go back to that video from a year ago, what you'll see is I have, I have 40 panels so over 18 kilowatts of solar, uh, but it's broken down into four strings. And this string here, because that device is not working, is essentially disconnected from the system. So right now, even though poor production, I'm down to, uh, I'm down a quarter of the, uh, the possibility of production because this one machine is down. And, um, in this case where I bought this equipment um, from, you know, just from a solar equipment supplier, I bought all this stuff from you know, almost everything here from Signature Solar. Uh, that means I really don't have, you know, somebody local that I can call to come service and, and give me a replacement. Uh, so I've been struggling for, uh, it took me over a week to get through to either Signature Solar or grow lot to find out how to go about getting a replacement. Uh, Signature Solar uh, requested a, a lengthy list of photos to, to describe the problem, which then they'll evaluate and, and hopefully uh, send me a replacement. So the, all this equipment is still under warranty, so it should be a warranty item, but you know, I'm two weeks in and I don't have a replacement and it, you know, I still haven't got all the stuff back to them to even, uh, you know, get started on on how long it's going to take to get a replacement. So I'm not sure how long I'm going to be down uh, to three-fourths capacity. Um, 
So challenge number one, failure in part of my solar equipment and, and then, you know, getting a replacement when I don't have a local installer who supplied all the equipment. Failure number two is as a backup for, for this system, I have a Generac whole house natural gas generator uh, with an automatic transfer switch. Um, that generator has catastrophically failed twice in the last month. Uh, so right before Christmas, uh, it quit working and um, uh, my local service provider uh, very quick response came out and uh, determined that uh, you know there was a major a major failure uh, with the uh, valve uh, rocker arms and push rods uh, they replaced all that got it back up and running uh, and it's been you know it's been working fine ever since until <clears throat> this week uh, so after last week with a failure of my one of my solar pieces of equipment on uh, like three days ago uh, my generator sort of bit the dust uh, I'll, sh I'll insert a picture here I went out and looked at it and there's you know half a quart of oil just thrown all over the bottom of it um, and of course that was like the coldest day uh, that night I think it got down to about six degrees here uh, again snow and you know these are and, and high winds uh, you know we've had we've had wind gusts at you know 30 40 even 50 miles an hour which is very unusual in western Pennsylvania and of course you know a generac uh, a backup generator service provider is really busy uh, so I'm hoping uh, that they're going to get here today um, and, you know, be able to get that repaired and, and get it up and running. So in the meantime, I had to come up with a solution. And the solution I came up with was, uh, I'm, you know, I'm actually pretty proud of myself with this idea. Uh, so for these stacks of batteries, I have these um, uh, battery chargers here so that you know when my generator comes on uh, instead of it throwing power back through the charge controllers um, you know the the battery manufacturer really or the charge controller really manufacturer did not recommend running your generator uh, supply in through the let's say the utility supply on the inverters charge controllers what they recommend is that you use a separate, uh, just a specific battery charger uh, to, uh, to charge the batteries with the generator. So what I have is two battery chargers that are just really pretty standard 110 volt, you know, regular plug-in battery chargers. They, now they're 48 volt because the battery systems are, are 48 volt batteries. So they're chargers that charge a 48 volt system but other than that, they, they really are kind of like a battery charger you would plug in to charge your, your uh, you know, the battery in your car. Uh, so what I was able to do is just run some extensions. You know, I just un unplugged the charger from the outlet that gets powered by the generator and ran extension cords. So I have two chargers and it just so happens that my Rivian has two outlets. So my Rivian has two 110 outlets in the back right here. And uh, so I've got two extension cords running from the Rivian, you know, <laughs> through my barn over to my battery chargers. And, uh, you know, and that's been able to keep us going uh, for the last couple of days. Now, uh, this stack of batteries, the full stack, if I fully charge that, is about 51 kilowatt hours. The battery, the battery pack in the Rivian is 100 and I think 135 kilowatt hours. So, you know, the battery in the Rivian is way, way bigger than this full stack. Um, now, it would take many, many hours 
probably days with these battery chargers, which are pretty low, low powered, but it's worked out that it's been uh, enough that, um, you know, I've been able to keep my system up and running, you know, and, and because that's up and running, everything in my house, in my house is running. Now, you know, I'm right now I'm not running like the, the clothes dryer, um, you know, things that are super heavy demand, but lights, you know, refrigerators, freezers, uh, you know, water pump, you know, the things that you typically need for, you know, um, day-to-day -day living, coffee pot, all those sorts of things, um, toaster, stove, we're running all of that. And, uh, you know, the power from the Rivian through those chargers, which is no special equipment, um, Everything we had here uh, didn't have to reprogram anything. Just unplug and you know unplug from the wall and plug into the the truck has been great and um, it's kept us up and running. Uh, I think this is we're into our third day now. Um, I did have to take the uh, took the Rivian out and uh, recharge the battery yesterday for about four or five hours, uh, but. Uh, you know, the, that charging goes much more, more quickly uh, than where I'm draining it. So uh, we're back up and, um, you know, I'll be able to run this uh, probably for, you know, the rest of today and into tomorrow. Uh, but I'm expecting the generator repair person to be here today. And he's bringing a, uh, a second unit if they can't get this one repaired he's gonna just swap it out uh, so we expect to be up back up and running uh, but it's an example of some of the challenges that we can face you know we did really thought planned well to say okay we have our primary system and it looks pretty fail safe uh, this system had been running for uh, we installed these inverters uh, in August of 22 so they were running pretty much without issue for a year and a half and then and then they failed and you know uh, within a matter of a few days after that uh, our generator which is only a year old uh, <clears throat> you know um, and and it failed and uh, didn't expect both those you know to face both those types of issues uh, but fortunately uh, you know, the way we have this set up, it was easy to just switch. And, and if we, you know, if we needed to, you know, I could easily go get a, you know, a small gas powered, uh, gasoline powered generator <clears throat> to run these, uh, these, uh, chargers. But, um, just thought this was kind of an interesting, uh, situation. And fortunately we've been able to keep things going. Um, it looks like uh, it's going to be probably at least another week. We're supposed to have this, this snowfall uh, today into tomorrow morning, uh, but then middle of next week we're supposed to have a, um, a warm-up and thaw-out. <clears throat> and so hopefully we can start getting better uh, solar production uh, you know, next week. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please um, leave them below. Thanks for watching.